All right, so here we have uh, two of these, a little different. Uh, this one is the first one. I accidentally printed it with grid infill. A little, too, a little stiffer than I intended. I can squeeze a little bit. <clears throat> but I definitely wanted uh, another one a little softer. So this was 10% grid infill. And this one is 5% uh, gyroid. And that's much more pliable. And it's actually a really good grip exercise. If I do it with my left hand, which is what I did it for in the first place, because uh, I did a little tennis elbow on the left hand from too much hockey. The left arm, I should say. So it's actually a really good grip exercise. Of course, I could tune it to whatever shape. But the gyroid infill, really, and at 5%, really is just about right what I wanted. Oh, man, that's, that's a really good exercise. <clears throat> Definitely a little stronger in the right hand. Pretty cool, though. This one I can flex it a little bit. Maybe someday when I grow up to be big and strong, I can crush this one. Anyway, I like it. It does exactly what I want. My dog doesn't like it, evidently. Anyway, thanks for watching. In this video series, I'm going to show how I designed for 3D printing, then printing it in TPU, a rehab fitness tool for tennis elbow rehab, which I'm calling the tennis elbow cantaloupe, because when I pick up a cantaloupe, palm down is when I perfectly feel a nagging injury. Now, I get this injury playing hockey, play a lot of hockey a few times a week, and I shoot righty, and so my left elbow, if I have one hand on the stick and kind of do the radar sweep thing, it's a lot of leverage on those little muscle connections there and uh, so it can hurt and then you can see here in the images uh, where the inflammation or the damage occurs so I am going to do this in um, SolidWorks and I'm gonna pause here All right, so I have a new SolidWorks document open here, and I have it at 1080p, and oh, it looks like I can make it a little wider. There we go. This is a little smaller than I'm used to, and so I might not be able to see some of my buttons, so it might slow me down a little bit, but no big deal. Shut off that origin, origin visibility. All right, so uh, basically I'm going to mimic the shape of a cantaloupe, um, and optimize for 3D printing. So let's go like the uh, front view or XZ view, which they're better named that way. I'm going to hit N for normal, and that annoys me that it went upside down, but hey, it is what it is. Um, ah, I did that. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to start a sketch uh, by typing any shortcut, any sketch related shortcut. I usually do C for circle. Uh, just because it's what I'm used to. And I'll put a center line, and, and I'm going to put a circle, and I'm basically going to do this. So I'm not going to print the whole ball, because that would require a whole bunch of supports. And I don't want to waste all that material. So I'm basically going to do this. Let's, uh, I'm going to tune this by approximate acceptable overhang on this. What I mean by that is the overhang typically without supports is set to like 45 degrees. That can vary based on a lot of variables, but that's a pretty safe number. I'm actually going to call it, f f I was going to say 40. Um, yeah, I'm going to do 40 just to be extra on the safe side. Uh, to be on the safe side. And um, I don't need the full ball, really. Um, that's probably enough. I guess with the coverage, depending on what size I make the ball. I, I have, I don't have small hands. Uh, but anyway, so how big do I want to make it? Um, so let's say, I'm just going by my hand here. I'm going to grab a ruler. Nice ruler from DigiKey. They sent me a free ruler years ago. has all kind of data, hole sizes, things like that. Uh, but anyway, so if I open my hand up and I go about mm, 
This thing's hard to read. About five and a quarter inches. Let's say five and a quarter inches. So we'll go five point two five over two because it's a radius here. All right, and so then I'm going to click that and say V for revolve, and there we go. But I f have forgot that what I want to do is because it's 3D printing, I don't need all of this, to, and I also want it to be fairly easy to crush, or not, you know, uh, I'm going to, obviously I'm going to tune it for sort of crushability, um, but uh, so I basically want to do something like this, see I can just do it hollow, but then this is going to be, up here will be overhang, so instead I'll do this sort of conical, and I say that, and I'm actually going to do a little bit uh, different to save material, so I'm going to actually do an arc from here to say, probably like way up here. Oops, that was my mistake. So to like way up here, and something like this. Now keep in mind this will be circular, so it was sort of self support all the way around, even though this is narrow. Um, and I can make it as narrow as I want. This I'm going to make quite thin. Let's call it 0 0.1. Oops. Because that's... Um, there won't be much force on that portion. So let's call that 0 0.1. And let's call this... Um, I don't know, 3 eighths. So interestingly, 0 0.38 is approximately 3 eighths. 0 0.375 is actually 3 eighths. And I'm just arbitrarily putting this. Actually, I want this to be... That should be a construction line. I want this to be... I can set the angle this way. So I'm going to put that line tangent to here. And like so. And to here. And so I want this to be less than 45. So let's say, again, 40 should be a nice safe number. Um, now, hmm, yeah, I want to change this a little bit. So I'm going to T for trim, and I'm going to power trim most of this arc away. I'm going to get rid of this tangent, because I don't actually want that tangent. That would have been painfully uh, annoying later. And I'm sort of doing this. I'm changing my mind on the fly here. So, and then I'm going to do, uh, if I hover over that again, it'll give me this tangent arc. So I'm going to delete this guy. I don't really need. I don't really need this. I'll just trim it. Oops. I'll just trim that away. I'm going to put the angle here. And call this. Uh, what did I say? 40. Nice safe number. And. Did it? I'm confused. Ah. All right. Let's call. Let's make sure this is vertical. And that's. 40, and get that out of the way, and is that going to be pretty, okay, probably, let's do that, so the, I'm just thinking about how that's going to work out with my infill, and the flexibility of it, so I think, let's say that's pretty good, and what happened to my angle here, I, oh, I trimmed away the center line, so let's see, okay, it's still at 40, that's fine. And we'll just leave that blue, that's fine. Is it, if I rebuild, it's gonna revolve. And so that's basically it, that's basically the model. And so I'm gonna save this, uh, mesh based. This uh, is huger than I expected and I'm gonna use a ton of, uh, <laughs> ton of material unless I'm careful here. So let's, let's uh, hit rotate and Let's rotate the camera a little bit. Hit this guy four times. And that does that. And so I'm a little surprised. I thought I printed last in TPU. All right, so I'm on my K1, not my K1 Max. I already have TPU loaded in my K1, so I'm going to print on that. And um, uh, this Fine Ninja Flex also works good for TPU. And so I'll just use that, but I'll change things around. Uh, layer height. I'm going to leave the layer height alone. I was thinking about going up to like 0.24, but it's not going to make much of a difference. Wall line count. So I want it to, um, 
adhere pretty good, but I want it to be I don't want it to be too stiff because I want it to be able to give. Although I don't really need it to give much. Now that I think about it, I don't need much range of motion there. Just a little bit of give to it. Um, I think I'm going to go two wall line count. And a lot of it's going to end up more because of the top and bottom layers anyway. And not much of it is actually vertical. So I suspect that... Uh, so like my top layers of eight... That's probably fine because the top part isn't going to flex much anyway. But I'm going to bring it down. I don't need eight on top. Let's go five. And the bottom layers aren't going to... Well, the bottom layer is actually um, up near the top. We'll add a little rigidity. Well, I think four will be fine. Um, actually, you know what? Actually, I'm going to change that to two just because I want the bottom surface to f be able to flex pretty well um, top skin layers I don't care about that I don't care about those infill I want very minimal infill let's I'm gonna say like 10% see how that looks I really don't want much infill because the infill is gonna have to collapse and that's fine infill pattern I want something fairly weak so I'm thinking Actually, oh, maybe this gyroid. That could be interesting. I don't think I've done gyroid yet. Let's do uh, gyroid. That Maybe that will flex nicely. And line multiplier, whatever. Overlap, and fill. Okay. Speeds, I'll leave alone. Wow, this thing goes really slow. Oh, I forgot about that. It goes really slow for the... Uh, for the real, so the softer stuff, the Ninja, fl ninja Flex. Um, but that's fine. It's going to take forever to print, but that's fine. Um, and supports, uh, no supports, material, these temperatures, uh, those look low. Hmm. But I printed it the other day, and it worked fine. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Uh, but that does t seem low. But we'll see how it goes. And first, actually, I just want to see all this other stuff I'm not going to worry about. I just want to see how much material this is going to use. Probably a lot. I may. Did, it, what, did I leave the layers, the shells at three, or did I change it to two? I did change it to two. Okay, good. Um, and slice it up and see what it looks like. And taking a moment. The slicer does take a little bit. The, the computer is pretty high end. Just takes time. I wonder if it's because I am using. It's probably part of it. So I'm using a step uh, step file instead of an STL file. So it also has to convert uh, the curves to. Does it con convert curves to mesh and then slice it? I wonder. No, I bet it doesn't. So, but I imagine that maybe it's possible. It's plausible that. Uh, step file being all curves just takes longer to slice than a, an STL file. That's <clears throat> that's an interesting experiment. I, sh I wonder, I should probably do that and uh, maybe that's a topic for another video. It's a topic for another video. Compare slice times STL versus step. That'll be interesting, because it takes a while. Alright, so it looks like we have the moon here. And it's just kind of neat artifacts. Um, 16 hours! And 90 grams. So basically a tenth of a roll. But it's because it's printing so slowly. I, I, forgot, <laughs> I forgot how slowly it's printing. Um, I wonder... If I just go to standard TPU settings, so I think it has standard TPU settings. Let me go back to that. I want to go back. I want to go ahead and prepare and um, see our TPU, generic TPU. So let's see. Uh, discard. I don't know. Jeez, I want to discard change. I don't like that it asks you things like that. It should be more user friendly than that. Um, all right, so generic TPU, normal quality, 
and two, four, four. I'm going to go three on the bottoms. And those I don't care. And let's compare everything else. Okay, yeah. Shell infill. 40. Let's go 10. I should have looked at that slice before I backed out of it, but oh well. Um, but this is going to be very similar anyway, so it doesn't matter. Speed, way faster. <laughs> way faster. Okay. So because the the uh, Ninja Flex is quite a bit softer, and so it tends to under extrude. I think it just kind of stretches and bunches up and things and slows it down. Uh, no supports, material, I 230 said 220. Okay. Uh, cooling, whatever, all this stuff's probably fine. Build it, put adhesion, auto burn, that's fine. This stuff I don't uh, care about. Save, slice. I should do it. I should have a stopwatch to tell me how long it takes to slice. That way I could compare it, but I'll just do that in one video, I guess. In a different video, in a dedicated video. This one is already getting long enough. And it's mostly there. And let's see, so from 16 hours and 7 minutes and 90 grams to, oh, it's like twice the material. Interesting, what did I change? I did something different. It's still 11 hours, holy cow. Uh, but I doubled the amount of material, so I'm going to go back into my settings and see what I missed. Um, two, two shells, four and three, and fill 10%. I don't understand why I doubled the material. That's strange. Auto brim. Huh. I don't understand how I doubled the material. Top layers four. Well, I'm gonna go top layers three. I really don't care about the top layers, and I'm gonna go bottom layers two. I really don't care about the bottom layers. Uh, skin layers, yeah, and fill ten percent. Um, that's pretty minimal. Huh? That's strange that it used so much more material on that slice. I wonder what the difference was. It's kind of too late to. I don't feel like figuring that out. Oh, and I don't have much time either. I have a call in 10 minutes. So let's go. Have a sip of Java. All right, hurry up. Let's lace it up. Oh, and I'm going to plug in my trusty uh, uh, USB drive here so I can use my sneaker net to walk it out to my print shed. No sense sending it through China. Uh, so we still, I uh, somehow seem to have increased the <laughs> amount of material again, but it's 11 hours. Let's roll this back and see what it looks like. I mean, that's a pretty good amount of infill. That should probably flex pretty nicely. And my, let's see, my top and bottom layers. So, like, by the time I get up here, I'm already getting pretty thick just because it's uh, the slope of the, at the tangent of the sphere skin, if that makes sense to say it that way. All right, so, and I can go out and print it, and hopefully it looks like I have enough time to get it going and get back in here for my call. So, uh, stay tuned, and we'll see how the print goes, and we'll see how it feels, and maybe we'll adjust some things. So, uh, stay tuned. All right, so we are back, and I printed my Exoskite scanner up here, and it's just way too stiff. I, well, actually, huh. you know what? Maybe it was because it was so cold out, so I just brought it in from the cold. It's actually, I can squeeze it a bit now. When I was outside, I couldn't squeeze it at all. Uh, I think it was just because of the cold. So I'm actually denting it with my thumb there and with my fingertips. So I'm not changing the overall shape of it, but I am. My fingers are digging in, so it's actually really good. Uh, but I did mean to do it with uh, gyroid infill, and I accidentally somehow ended up with this uh, 
rectangular infill and a little more dense than I would have liked. So I'm actually going to do another one. And so I guess I'll have different, <laughs> I'll have multiple levels of, uh, multiple levels of, uh, you know, sort of different strengths. So I can work my way up to this one, have one a little bit softer. Uh, check out my awesome new t-shirt. Right? Don't be jealous. I like my t-shirts. All right. Anyway, so I am going to... I was thinking about putting a bunch of holes in it, but I like the idea of not having holes in it. I like the nice clean look of it. I would have done just the entire ball, but uh, this prints easier without any support. Just this little brim here. And so, I don't need a whole ball. Alright, so I'm going to change this to have um, gyroid infill. And let's see, where are you? Infill. How do I change my infill? Uh, I mean, do I have to say advanced? What am I missing? Oh, infill pattern. Good. Uh, uh, I think I want gyroid. Let's see what that would... Uh, I want to say gyroid and 5%. Let's see what that gets me. Slice. <coughs> Big hockey win in my men's league last night. Well, technically we didn't win. <laughs> we tied right at the beginning of the game. 4-4 four to four to advance to the next round. And we kept going down. It was like 1-0 them, 1-1. One, 2-1 one. Two, one them, 2-2. Two, 3-2 two. Three, two them, 3-3. Three, 4-3 three. Three them. Pulled our goalie at the end and uh, we pulled off the tie against the uh, top scorer in the league. Anyway, all right, I don't know, filler. So let's see what this will look like. Uh, this should actually print awesome. So the way I did that cone on the, mostly cone on the inside, that was actually pretty smart because it printed perfect. Like, I mean, the, 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 the surface on this is, is perfect, even though it had to, uh, I did very, few top and bottom layers but the way the the cone supports the infill uh, really came out perfect and this really looks good maybe even still a little more dense on the infill but it being all curved it should all deflect easier than the grid infill and so I'm gonna try this one I'm gonna print this as is and uh, see how that works for me. Um, you know what, I just had a thought. I think I'm going to... I could make my... Actually, that's pretty... Wow, I can... I like this. I can actually... As now it's coming up to room temperature rather than being outside. And I mean, it's, it's pretty cold outside. It's probably 20 to 25 degrees outside. So I didn't even consider that when I first tried to squeeze it fresh off the printer. It is cold out there, so I can actually squeeze this pretty good. This is actually almost exactly what I would want it to be. And so I almost don't even need the lighter one, but I'm going to do it just to uh, have it. And so I'm going to print this one off as is. And so I need to... Oh, I left my drive outside. Hopefully I have, I have a few of them. Hopefully I have another one inside. Ah, here's one. This one came with my uh, Ender 3 S1 Pro, I think. I'm going to use it. All right, let's throw her in the old drive. And this, for some reason, it's telling me everything I plug into that USB needs to be fixed every time. Whatever. Uh, so I am going to eject. And we are good to go. I'm going to go out there and print this guy. What is this? Oh, this one's only... Wow, this one's only seven hours? That's super interesting because the grid infill... Of course, that was 10% instead of 5%. Uh, 
I want to say that was like 11 hours or t the original one was going to be 16 hours, I think. Uh, so I don't know how long this one actually took the other, the previous one, but it's so, all right. So basically eight hours to print this and uh, 111 grams. So a tenth of a roll. I think I got plenty on that roll still. And so I am going to print it and uh, stay tuned and we'll see how that one comes out. All right, so here we have uh, two of these, a little different. Uh, this one is the first one. I accidentally printed it with grid infill. A little, too, a little stiffer than I intended. I can squeeze a little bit. <clears throat> but I definitely wanted uh, another one a little softer. So this was 10% grid infill. And this one is 5% uh, gyroid. And that's much more pliable it's actually a really good grip exercise if i do it with my left hand which is what i did it for in the first place it's actually a really good grip exercise of course i could tune it to whatever shape but the gyroid infill really and at five percent really is just about right what i wanted oh man that's that's a really good exercise Definitely a little stronger in the right hand. Pretty cool though. This one I can flex it a little bit. Maybe someday when I grow up to be big and strong, I can crush this one. Anyway, I like it. it does exactly what I want. My dog doesn't like it, evidently. Anyway, thanks for watching.